We're glad you enjoy and join us, DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang again, on our search for humanity and humility on our Hawaiian islands, especially the one of Oahu, uh, which is our modern, mid-century, modern uh, metropolis here in the middle of nowhere because we're the most remote from all landmass. But also we can proudly say in the middle of everywhere, especially when it comes to mid-century architecture, because we've just been honored by the uh, National Symposium of Dokomomo, that movement and initiative that documents and conserves the modern movement. So, but how do you find this place and how do you find out about this place? And can we bring big, the first picture up here? This is my personal access to the place because my family business uh, had been published in some, for some very profane proletarian uh, projects here in both the Wallpaper Magazine and the Faden Atlas, both uh, from the UK. And they teamed up, next picture please, to make a travel guide. And as you can see down there in the bottom right, whatever city in the world they think is worth it, they make one. And guess what? We got one. So we were considered to be worthwhile it. So uh, next picture is a project um, that is in there. And there's actually a project within that project. And without that project, I wouldn't sit here because that's the place where I first met. We amongst the architectural community know as Mr. Easy Breezy. And within Think Tech Hawaii, we know him as the host of one of the longest uh, standing shows called Green. And that's Howard Wick. And uh, our today's guest, Dennis Soyoka. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for being here. You will tell us actually about the project within the project, which is your place. So welcome, first of all, to the show. Oh, thank you. And tell us a little bit what that place is. Well, I started the coffee shop in November of 1993. Um, I, I used to work at uh, a coffee shop in a warehouse called Coffee Tior. Uh, back in the 70s, and uh, I always wanted to have a coffee shop refer uh, ever since then. And I first proposed putting a coffee shop in this building when it was a YWCA mm -hmm. in 1980, but I didn't get any traction with the YWCA. But ironically, uh, the YWCA invited me back in 1993 to take it over as a, a turnkey operation. Mm -hmm. So all the money that I didn't save between my first desire to open a coffee shop and then, I didn't really need because uh, it was a turnkey operation. I just had to buy the espresso machine and, and my coffee machines and my grinders. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just took it over from 1993 and changed the menu. It was uh, previously uh, vegetarian or vegan, uh, locavore. I mean, these are all things that I still do, but uh, it's, I opened it up to be omnivore, and at 27 mm -hmm. years in business, that's 27 times longer than anyone's ever managed to keep the coffee line open. Mm -hmm. And the picture you see up here is actually how you would approach the project, and besides that lady there who might be actually, these days, you made a funny comment about how we are more disoriented using these devices in our hands here yeah. than they help, but some people don't quite even know because you talked about the right color competitors in the market where their big signs tell you exactly where the front door is. But in your case, you got to be a little bit explorative, yeah, right? You won't see any bright yellows or reds or orange uh, at my shop. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, some people, I get a lot of nice uh, reviews from Google and Yelp, mm -hmm. but you'll find uh, the aberrant review of one star. Uh, I think they're basically complaining that I'm not a McDonald's. And I'm yeah. glad that they don't like me because I don't want to see them again. Um, but uh, the people who do get what I'm doing really appreciate what I do. And, and they happen to be some of the um, smartest people at the University of Hawaii. Yeah. And let's go to the next slide. If you come from the right side here, you try to get in from this end, which doesn't really work that well. well but the, the next picture is when you come in from the other side yeah. and you might run into Dennis here, which I did last yeah. week, and see you watering your, your plants there. Yeah, this is the back entry. Uh, it's between uh, my building and the pink building, the, mm -hmm. the pink Atherton, uh, mm -hmm. why, uh, they call it A House for Atherton House. Yeah. My building is called the Mary Atherton Richard House. Mm -hmm. And uh, my building was originally a YWCA, but the YMCA bought it in 1995. Yeah. 
And by the way, preparing for when the show is over, please don't turn off before you saw all the underwriters being mentioned. The Etherton Family Foundation yeah, yeah. is actually the first one mentioned in that yeah. one. So that's a proud supporter of the program. And it's also a proud history of your building you're in, right? right? Because yeah. they were the clients, so yeah, to speak, yeah. right? Way back. Yeah, and your building has a very subtle frontage because it's gray and it's got a lot of plants around it. So it doesn't really, like yeah. you said, it doesn't have red and yellow and orange to catch your attention, but and that's the way you want it. Well, it's very they, understated, uh, I'm, right? I'm limited because uh, when the, when the um, uh, building was uh, bought by the YMCA before, the, uh, in the process of the changeover, the, um, all the people from the Department of Planning permitting came, and mm -hmm. I could tell who they were because they all came up to my counter and they had the same question. They goes, oh, you have a <laughs> restaurant over here. And then before they left, uh, they all dropped the ball on me. They said that uh, you, can't, you can't have a restaurant over here. It's not zoned for commercial. Yeah. And I said, well, if you guys were doing your job, you probably would have known about that. But um, you know, I, I think I made them, I think I pissed them off. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Yeah. So they, um, uh, the variance got, the, the YMCA got me a variance to uh -huh. uh, continue yeah. to operate my uh, yeah. restaurant. But I could not, but you said, they said, you can operate your restaurant, restaurant, but you can't have a sign mm -hmm. and you can't advertise. <laughs> There so, is a sign here on the door. Yeah, but there's well, a sign. It's a very subtle sign. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's more only, word of mouth, too. Yeah, yeah, the only sign you can see are the directional signs that uh, tell you that there's an entrance yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. And in the best tradition of modern buildings, which uh, in contrast to the Victorian ones, mm -hmm. which are like you have the big front, yep. which tries to impress you. Once you right. get through that, you're rather disappointed. Here, I mean, for architectural experts, you already, I mean, the, the previous slide with a sort of extruded grout yep. reminds of very much of the uh, Alfred Price entrance of the zoo, mm -hmm. uh, which has that as well. Which I think I the IWU yeah. yeah. building, yeah. building on so, Atkinson has that, that same yeah. thing. That's a very prominent, and, and it's very hard to do. There's almost no one who can do that anymore these mm -hmm. days. And Try to work. tell a mason to do that, good yeah. luck, right? Yeah. But I mean, for the general public who, needs to unfortunately be more in, than ever educated about what these buildings really are. But once you go through this door, and next picture please, you are wowed. Yeah. Because that's the core, that's the heart of your place, Dennis, right? Yeah, I used, to, I used to have a lot of plants inside, but all those plants got so big I had to take them outside. <laughs> but fortunately during that period, the neighbor's uh, palm trees had dropped so many seeds that there were some volunteer palm trees that grow in between the properties. So now it's, it's uh, I've got more more space because I, had, I took out all the plants that were occupying the floor space, yeah. but I still have the same effect of of these plants in between. Yeah, uh, and this is really indoor outdoor because you've yeah. got an open wall, but you've got walls on the other three sides as well as a roof. Oh, so yeah. and, and that's what we call easy yeah, breezy. That's what we call easy breezy. And when you say most of your customers, guests, are fellow Europeans. I mean, that's how we want to live if we come here. If we yeah. want to all be hermetic, we can stay home where we come from, right? Yeah, right. That's yeah. probably the reason. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's a nice environment. Um, if people want to listen to music, uh, the foyer, which is just beyond this, in this, in this picture, um, is a, a, it's, a, it's got a nice acoustics. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I know how to lay out the speakers so they don't cross each other. So the, you, you have a really nice sound in there. Yeah, that would be slide 18 if we can yeah. bring this up pretty quick here. Um, yeah, and there's a, there's a ceiling fan up there. So if you go to the next slide, number nine here, we can see this is a superb put in place concrete ceiling, which, you know, trying to do this these days. I mean, Bundit and Janice did it with their recent yeah. Molo'ili lofts. Yeah. And, you know, you can only do this prefab these days. Yeah. And then the very nice, you know, wooden framework underneath and the most bioclimatic device to get the heat out in this very tall ceiling space, right? I mean, this is like yeah. environmental systems 101 right. demonstrated. Right, just yeah. move it with a fan. Yeah, Howard but, Blake told me that these are the most efficient uh, yeah. ways to circulate air, because he said that I think they only consume about 10 watts of energy. Oh yeah, it's yeah. composed to a whole built-in system, yeah. Or, or even just a floor fan. Oh like, yeah, those, really? Those, those consume a lot of energy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. But besides that, um, slide number 11, uh, a highlight, if you get one, the next slide after this one here, uh, Wednesday nights are really special at your place. Oh yeah, we have a lamb dinner at, uh, at, at, the, at the shop every Wednesday night at 7.30, and it actually it turns into a salon. Uh, this last week we had an actor, 
uh, two architects, uh, a, a, a building superintendent. Um, who else was there? Uh, Howard Alvin, was there. Yeah, Howard was there. Howard was there. We all, Were you there? Yeah, he was there too. He was there. Yeah, there. There's one of the yeah. two architects. But right? it, it, it turns into a salon, actually. It's a. Uh, and uh, there's a guy that comes frequently, Colin, Colin Moore. He always jokes that uh, um, uh, the, the, the kind of, the kind of uh, gatherings that I have are, are, are what a lot of expensive restaurants are trying to do, but we just do it naturally over mm -hmm. here. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of things just happen naturally mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, a, well, this whole place has grown naturally, too. That's one thing we were talking about beforehand. Yeah, yeah. and to pour some little bit of water into that wine that we're like to drink there go to the next slide there's actually other uh rooms in the building that are unfortunately not in use anymore ryan yeah like the ymc one. is the only other tenant in the building right now the university bought the building and took over took possession of the building uh to, in uh, august of 2017. however they didn't uh, get around to telling me who to pay my rent to until about uh Six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and walk us upstairs, Dennis, please. Next slide here. Yeah. Uh, again, this reminds us, DeSoto, of when we did the Hugh H shows mm -hmm. about these really nice, yeah. pristine plain. guardrails, yeah. plain and simple, yeah. just, but just, perfectly just, crafted. Right, right. Couldn't do it right. these days anymore. Correct. The craft Correct. is gone. It's right. all too expensive, right? So yeah. really, For an inexpensive this... building, you wouldn't do it. Absolutely, right. yeah. So let's walk. Uh, next slide here. See some very nice detailing here. Simple but elegant. Yes, right? very yeah, that's nice. a screen at the top of the stairs. Yeah, and then the next slide is the uh, sort of as uh, Ronald Lindgren calls it the structural expressionism, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no ornation but the structure itself, right? Right. So these nicely tailored concrete beams there. Again, try to do that this day. You can't do it the way this was done poured in place concrete. There's no way you can pay for that. You got to yeah. go prefab. Yeah. out there but and this but, is a 1959 building exactly so it's a 60 year old building at this exactly. point. exactly and go to the next slide which is also a, a space you love dennis and you wish it would be more in use right yeah i think this would be a great space for yoga uh yoga yeah. studio i mean i i've I've, heard, I've seen um uh documentaries about yoga in india and uh, they've had studios like this where you can hear all, I mean, there's a lot of street noise in this space, but yeah. it reminds me of the spaces I've seen in, in documentaries uh, yeah. about yoga in India. Because not to misread what might look like windows, there is actually openings with just bug screens in there. Yeah. 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 And you've been saying, everyone, everyone talks about resilience and stuff like that, and this building has been riding out several storms, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Fairly since, well. since, it, since the building was built, there's been several hurricanes uh, getting close to the islands and never has this place been, this ever been flooded i mean i've been never in my experience have i seen this place flooded yeah, yeah, or yeah. that uh that dying area that you showed yeah. previously so our feeling is next slide although there are some indications here where there's a tree growing out of this terrace that's just outside of this space here where we can say it seems like uh, demolition by neglection how you call that you just let the building you know you stop repairing it and that way at some point you can say oh well you know it's in such a bad shape but this one has concrete bones right and you don't get these to be rotting away or so right so the substance of this building is really solid and if you would want to you could touch it up you know with relatively little effort so i think uh, what we hear unfortunately uh, just last week that the university plans to basically bulldoze this building the next one basically reminds me of my dental experiences with when you have a, <laughs> a bad tooth and they try to save it and do a root canal and carve out the core of it and, and fill it with some stuff. They want to keep the facade and basically, uh, what's the other hall? We say Gartley Hall. Gartley right? Hall. They yeah. did that with Gartley yeah, Hall. Gartley right? Hall yeah. And that, that's part of the original which, quad. Which makes, which makes our historic colleagues of Don Hibbert and, and Bill Chapman say, oh my God, you did this in postmodernism? Please don't do it these yeah. days, right? So we actually say this building is absolutely a keeper because it's a prime yeah. example of, of tropical modernism, but but not as sort of a dead body. But uh, let's go to the next picture. And, and again, it's 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 alive and, and kept alive through you. This is, by the way, the space you were talking about before, right? Where you can have, where you have good acoustics, right? Yeah, yeah, can study yeah. really well. 
Yeah. You said you many people have written their dissertations in there. Yeah, there's right? been books written there and uh, uh, dissertations, and and I and may I've been acknowledged in, in, <laughs> in the preface of many of these uh, writings also. There you go for providing the tranquil space, right? And well, and one of the things that we just saw is unfortunately it's underutilized. Yeah. This building is not utilized to the extent that it could it's, be, it, and it deserves to be. It's designed, the, the current design is a, a community center, so that's how I modeled my business. Uh, yeah. you, I have the only current bulletin board you'll, that you can find, uh, learn about events around town. Uh, there's, there's pencil sharpeners and pens and clocks everywhere, mm -hmm. because it's some, for some reason, faculty and, and students don't seem to carry Pencils mm -hmm. or pens or, <laughs> or clocks. So, and, and people, uh, uh, people that get the architecture uh, use it for what it's supposed to be used for. It's, they, yeah. it's basically office space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, wow. uh, Dean Sakamoto, before he moved back from Yale, he uh, was basically using my space as his office space. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Live work, how we call yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. right. Let's go to the next slide, and that gets us to the heart of your establishment, where the where the things happen. And this lady here happened to be there and told us this interesting story that, as it's often on the island, that you've got to get off island to really re appreciate what you had, right? So she said she grew up in this area, very close, but the place wasn't on her radar. It, it took her to go to Seattle become a fan of these kind of, you know, owner owned operated coffee shops to come back and say, wow, I actually always had one and here it is. And now she is a customer, right? I mean, that, that shows that, that, how nondescript, yeah. right? And that, how that low happens, key. That happens a lot. A lot of times people are brought here uh, on the last day of school. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 mm -hmm. They've matriculated and, and, and moving on, they, they threw a little party for them. Mm -hmm. And um, they bring them to the coffee line. And, you know, uh, uh, they, they say, well, you know, I never knew about this place. And I, I, don't, I don't want to tell them that maybe they didn't want to bring you here because <laughs> yeah. uh, they didn't want to see you here, you know? Yeah. But, um, but for the party, this is a good place. But, um, uh, it's also been, uh, I've also met some famous people here. I've met, uh, uh, they brought Stokely Carmichael here mm -hmm. uh, to show him that we have a Berkeley S type coffee shop yeah. at mm -hmm. the University of Hawaii. And, yeah. and he was impressed with it. And um, uh, I've also met uh, um, Mikhail Barishnikov uh, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when the YWCA owned it, uh, mm -hmm. they, they, had, they used to have a sprung floor mm -hmm. in that uh, multi purpose room. Mm -hmm. And that's where he rehearsed before oh. his performance. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, peeking a little bit closer into your wizard chamber here, next slide here, we can see what else delicious you serve. Yeah, that's uh, some chili that I made for uh, um, the, 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 the graduate students that, uh, um, I guess to sober up the graduate students after uh, the TGs that occurs every Friday in front of marine science. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I figured that you know, they get so intoxicated that maybe it's hard for them to find dinner. So <laughs> I started providing dinner for them after, uh, after I reopened the shop at 7 o'clock so that these people can straggle in and, <laughs> and, and you know, have a real meal. Very because uh, uh, I'm the only place that's open on weekends and at night, uh, I'm at, on, uh, uh, on holidays and on Wednesday night, I'm the only place that's open yeah, in the area yeah. within walking distance yeah. of the University of Hawaii. And uh, we have to mention at this point, you're, you're running this pretty much as a non-profit pro bono business, well, pretty much getting by, but not being able to be profitable, right? So I'm, I'm, and when, you, when we discussed that you might be pushed out, you, know, I was, you always surprised me in that case with like saying, well, you know, as sad as it might be, maybe it's good because maybe I finally start all over and make money, right? Yeah, I just do it because I like it. And yeah. it, it, pays, it pays expenses. And it's been some of my retirement plan since I was, you mm -hmm. know, 35. So mm -hmm. I've been basically doing this uh, because I enjoy it. You yeah. know? And I, I, you know, I considered myself retired after I stopped working for other people. So you think of yourself as retired now, even though you're really not. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine not working or yeah. not yeah. doing something. And I'm, yeah. we no. can't imagine that either. But I'm thinking about how one would translocate, I guess it's the term, if you would move this over to another place. And next slide, myself having had a chance to design with my family business, coffee shops, I, I, it, it, it 
it makes me aware of you couldn't do that with your place because mm -hmm. the design, the gestalt mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. organic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, next slide, we had an interesting discussion because you said to me that people kind of over romanticize or kind of make this sort of nostalgia up that each object is scripted yeah, people, and is there for... People yeah. adopt me and then they, they kind of come up with their own narrative of, of uh, some of the things that I have, you know, I mean, yeah. of, of, the, of the setting. And uh, a lot of it is fiction, but uh, it's okay, you know. And, it, and it, this one I asked you, and he told me what the author meant with this one, but it also, you told me what it meant for you is keeping the kitchen cool, oh, because yeah. this is where the sun comes in in the afternoon, yeah, and you just yeah. block the sun with that. Yeah, the, the, the artist <laughs> is a guy named Bill Fien, and, and uh, he since moved to North Carolina, but uh, I, I met him uh, one day when I was, uh, I used to meet my girlfriend every, every Monday, in Waimanalo, mm -hmm. and um, uh, on what he, he used to live on one of the right of ways to Waimanalo Beach, and that's the first time I met him. And then I met him again when he was selling his uh, uh, his green briar, which is basically a, a valiant that's been con converted mm -hmm. into a, um, a van. van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's had the same type of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. motor, like similar to a Volkswagen motor. Looked like a, it was yeah. a copy of the Volkswagen yeah. van. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we got we became pretty good friends, and I and uh, he had done several shows at my place, and mm -hmm. and this is a picture of his uh, ex-wife. Uh, before uh, his ex-wife, when she was pregnant with their first child, who mm. miscarried, but um, between the time that this show went up and the time that the show went down, uh, his wife had run off with his kid because um, you know they were estranged, and you know he found himself a girlfriend, and that was her retaliation for it. So I said, "You probably don't want to take this back with you." So can, can you please uh, <laughs> give it to me? Put it up here. So they keep the sun out of my kitchen. You know? Exactly. <laughs> And next slide, your awesome story. What's why were you insisting of having a picture taken of this? Well, the free store is uh, is Gay Chan at the art art department. That's yeah. her idea. But uh, she once told me that that I was her. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, muse. Yeah, muse. <laughs> and I, I I don't know if she was referring to the free store idea because my shop is uh, basically uh, furnished with the uh, cast offs yeah. that I find yeah. Yeah. on the street and. Being in the university area, there's a lot of people that move into apartments and, mm -hmm. and houses in the neighborhood, and then uh, they leave things when they don't need them anymore. Yeah, and talking so, off the street, maybe we can get the next slide up here. Because even in the university area, even as famous people as Bruno Mars, who was living in abandoned homes with his dad, mm -hmm. way back there in mm -hmm. Manoa, right? And we still have these sort of urban slash suburban nomads here, as there is one. And you're running a very inclusive management. Can you get the next slide up here? Tell us how you basically uh, constructed your front yard in regard well, to that. The, the building has all these, all these possibilities for people to congregate. And uh, what's fun about being the sole, practically the sole mm. occupant of the building is that if no one's going to use the space, then I'll take some of the cast off that I find and create little spaces. Uh, the coffee shop is actually the biggest coffee shop you'll find in Honolulu. It, it has a front, this is a picture of the, the front entrance and uh, I put some you know, cast away, cast off chairs out there and create a nice little seating area. And it's nice to sit there in the, evening, in the evenings and it's nice to sit there after the sun gets a little higher in the morning. Yeah. But I don't see may, very many people taking advantage of that space. So. But I like to sit there, so mm -hmm. as that's, you do uh, here. Yeah. But you offer, and yeah. Provide. But I like to try to create all these little yeah. niches, little yeah. spaces that people can occupy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And this is one that's definitely underutilized. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to go sit there. Yeah, you have to yeah. go sit Whoa. there. Yeah. Okay. I will spot you there. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide, and we're getting to the end of the show. But we want to make a pitch here. This is us uh, coming Saturday, uh, starting at 2 o'clock. There is uh, what's a national initiative of Doko Momo. It's called Walking Tourists. So every chapter has that in the United States. Everyone is walking uh, along with mid-century modern marvels. And we start at, uh, which is a sad start, because just like we were doing it with the Ward 
mm -hmm. uh, plaza way mm -hmm. back, which soon after that was demolished, and that's maybe why you're hiding this time in your office and not joining. No, you, know, you have a better reason. No, I can't it's come. Okay. I would like to come, but I can't. But we have to. I have to, on our behalf, talk about yeah. the varsity building, which is also doomed for for demolition. But we. We don't give up. We walk up the hill and we end pretty much. This is the brochure. This is online. It shows only three buildings out of eight yeah. or so, and yours is part of it. So once again, it's up to this day a very prominent building. And next slide. This is a little composition, a little potpourri of other pieces of work of the architects who are called Johnson and Perkins. There is this beautiful a decade of design publication from the heydays of tropical modernism here from the 60s published by the AIA. You see a bunch of single family residences. Above you see a very recent one that has been gentrified and remodeled and goes for several millions. And uh, very interesting on the very bottom right is actually an, a very uh, affordable uh, units tower that they designed very early in the 60s. And that gets us to the uh, next slide. Uh, these are uh, folks from, you see from the license plate, your license plate collector. Yeah, so is yeah, this yeah. a Hawaiian? Is the H for Hawaiian? No, it is not. The H, this is a German license plate on the motorcycle okay. on the left. And the H stands for Hanover, which is your hometown. That's it. So these, this couple here, Kirsten and Stefan Kleinschmidt, with their Americano, that's why they have Harleys. Yeah. They have, actually, it turned out to be a blue uh, book, not a, not a yellow that's book. The original but this is, color, this is yeah. the original yeah. on the Lulu City Guide. So people like them, culturally interested tourists, have these. And they mm -hmm. come with the expectation that this very special right. place Correct. is around and stays around. Right. So last slide here. Um, I think uh, if if we would get rid of this place, it would look make no. us look no. us as UH, which I'm an employee yeah. of, would make us look very bad. And uh, you know we, we've been you know talking a lot about if we want to resist progression, you know, mm -hmm. and we can't win, right? No, so no, no, you can't. There is obviously a demand for other things like student housing. But we have solutions for that, right? Well, the, the other possibility is, too, this is, this is what's come up in uh, the classes that you teach at UH, the Primitivist Projects, which are just theoretical now, but they, they can be built. Good. They're tall, skinny columns, yeah. and they're cylindrical. Yeah. They have a lot of interesting aspects to them. And you're saying, wait a minute, why don't we leave this 1959 building and put in some Primitiva structure there? Instead yeah. of wiping everything out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there is one on campus. There is a round dormitory. There, there are. Oh, they're absolutely. They're yeah. like the ancestors yeah. of that. They, they are. are the evolution are. of that. Yeah. And so we, uh, why don't you at the end please share with the audience yeah. what the uh, wallpaper what that, what was that, What classifying. the book actually says, mm -hmm. I'm going to read to you, and you can see the picture in the lower left. Coffee line, the mix of office furniture, saggy 1960s chairs, Formica top tables, musical instruments, Kitchen appliances and houseplants at Dennis Ueoka's snack bar is part shabby flat, part campus cool. Think of it more as an extrusion of Sueoka's mind, the cafe equivalent of the film Being John Malkovich. In addition to excellent coffee, Sueoka serves up a range of hearty no-frill sandwiches and vegetarian dishes for which you may have to wait. A fascinating selection of reading material and an interesting crowd will make you want to linger. There we are. That being said, we're at the end of the show. With that, we expect the uh, Etherton uh, Y to mm -hmm. be around and Coffee Line for much longer we because it so. is a prime institution. It is. So thank you, Dennis, for having yes, been here and Thanks. encouraged us for that. And thank you to Soto. You're it's welcome. just very coincidental because they just had that faculty senate meeting exactly. last week exactly. discussing yeah. uh, plans so, for the yeah. building. So that being said, uh, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to see you again for uh, one of our next shows. And until then, please stay very tropically mid-century and also beginning of the next century modern. Bye-bye.